Okay, it's been two days since the Tesla semi truck in Wheeling went, where Tesla also revealed the Tesla Roadster next generation. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Roadster and I done some calculations in regards to range and stuff. And um, also in the end, I will talk about whether we will keep it or not. Yeah, and by the way, the acoustics here is not the best. We are still at the hotel room in LA. And there might be some noise from outside or whatever, but I'll do my best, yeah. Uh, anyway, let's start with, you know, I I did some guess, I had some uh, some guessing on how it would be, and I would say, you know, I kind of hit and miss maybe 50%, so I was right about the, I call it the ultra charger, they call it the mega charger. Uh, now I'm talking about the semi, by the way, by the way that there will be some kind of like fast charging network for semis. And also, I, I you know, People ask me what what uh, what is Tesla gonna reveal like additional thing, and I was guessing Roadster based on you know the whole refer program or whatever. Some people said maybe Model Y, or the Tesla pickup truck, but the Roadster was my guess, <laughs> and it was right. Uh, and also, if you see here in the early video, I was guessing that that car would kick ass. It's gonna beat freaking everything on the market. Porsche, Lamborghini. Uh, I don't know, Bugatti Veyron and that was also correct um, so let me give you some specs in case, in case you don't know what this is about so the new, the next generation Roadster will do 0 to 60 miles per hour which is almost 100 kilometers per hour in 1.9 seconds so um, Optimus Prime will do it in 3.4 seconds and Optimus Prime is getting slightly outdated so it's a Model X by the way, Optimus Prime and the Roadster will do 0 to 100 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds. Again, Optimus Prime will do this in about 7.7 .7 seconds. And a quarter mile takes only 8.8 .8 seconds. That is just ridiculously low. I'm going to come back to that later and compare it to some of the other cars. And Tesla claims more than faster than 250 miles per hour top speed. That's over 400 kilometers per hour. Now we're talking about supercar uh, territory here and uh, they also claim 1000 kilometer range or 621 mile range of like highway range and not uh, an EDC and a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack three motors two in the back one in the front and 10,000 neuron meter of torque but that is wheel torque so I'm also gonna come back to that and it's supposed to seat four people so I'm guessing it's more like you know most other um, sports cars that those rear seats will be for people without legs. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little about the price. Uh, so on the website you see that the base price is two hundred thousand uh, dollars, and um, you can reserve one if you put down a fifty k reservation deposit. And if you want to go for the founders edition, founders series, then you have to put down two hundred fifty thousand dollars which is the price for the car and um, well, with this car Tesla is entering supercar territory uh, but if it's compare this to some of the other cars that I will uh, compare like, mention later in this video uh, for instance Lamborghini Aventador SV that one cost 500,000 and that is considered a cheap car uh, but it's only limited to 600 uh, cars that's it, you know, you can't buy it anymore. Uh, Porsche 918 Spider, which is also freaking fast. $850,000. Uh, that one is also limited to 918 uh, units. And Bugatti Chiron, which is faster than Bugatti Veyron, is $3 million. And that one also limited to 500 units. So, what the heck? Um, the roads that cost like... I don't know, it's just ridiculously cheap compared to the other cars. And, okay, um, so I mentioned the Founders. Uh, what is Founders? Well, it's most, mostly like uh, Model X Founders, I guess. It's just a signature. That is, you get it early, pretty much. That's it. There's no, like, laser can on it or whatever. Uh, it's just, you get it early. Uh, and also, if you go for the Founders, you will have it pretty much fully loaded maybe there are like a few options you have to pay extra for but you get it very like very fully loaded just like optimus prime which is founders you know lots of stuff included 
I'm guessing that there will probably be the, the Elon mentioned that this prototype is just the base model and that there will be even more insane beyond insane uh, whatever parts there so the founders will have that I guess and uh, oh, freaking fossils I don't know if you can hear it yeah hopefully the microphone will try to cover out that but um, also uh, I'm guessing just like uh, the model S signature is that if there are any uh, hardware upgrades later which you know which can be upgraded not like autopilot new hardware but smaller upgrades uh, hardware upgrades maybe even software upgrades you know um, I guess signature I mean or founders will get them for free whereas other people have to pay extra and uh, the founders might get um, I'm guessing you know they will get some kind of unique color I don't know if they will still go for that signature red or maybe some other colors yeah and um, what about people who are participating in the referral program like me and many other people um, well um, I'm guessing that you know it's it's a like I have to make a reservation in order to buy one it's not like I will get it for free I mean technically yes if I if I have 100% discount then I would get it for free but I still I think I still have to put in a door order um, that's probably how it works so as of today um, in mid-november I have whooping 68% I know other people have already reached the goal 100% so I'm still struggling to get more, 68%, yeah, uh, so, mm, uh, and also I guess I could also go for founders, so you know the, the whole referral program doesn't say anything about founders or not, but I guess it's a little bit confusing to me, but I, I'm guessing, you know, if I want that price to be founders, then I have to order it as a founders, yeah, and put down a lot of money, which I don't have. Uh, but again, let's call, go back to how fast this car is. So, you know, if you compare the numbers, you know, um, to, let's say, Porsche 911 Spider, then you see that the Spider makes this uh, 0 to 60 in 2.2 seconds, which is about the same as a Model S P100D, ludicrous. And uh, that's uh, 0 to 100 miles per hour. And I only look at some YouTube videos to try to figure out, but it seems like the Porsche will do it in 5 seconds, which is slower than the Tesla Roadster. And uh, quarter mile time is slower. <laughs> uh, and again, with the Bugatti Chiron, same thing there, you know. And Lamborghini Aventador, they are all slower than <laughs> the Roadster. So, why the heck would you buy some of the other cars, you know? And you know, up until now, we didn't have any Tesla like supercar, well, except for the old Roadster, but the old Roadster is getting old and you know, based on old technology. Uh, so um, up until now we had to use Model S or X to compete with these supercars so of course in the early days you know uh, the P85 they did some drag race versus uh, uh, a BMW M5 or whatever but eventually when the P85D came out and all the other faster cars from Tesla came out then there was almost no point to try to compare Tesla versus uh, similar sized like sedan or whatever SUV you know they will just beat them all so that's why people started comparing like big family car or big SUV you know, S and X versus supercars but now we finally have Tesla supercar and <laughs> I'm guessing you know, it would just beat them so uh, before Model S or X well in drag races lots and lots of videos of drag races you will see that S and X they have this really big advantage in the start but then eventually they lose out and after only five to ten seconds some of these supercars uh, for instance the Lamborghini or the Porsche would just go faster but I'm guessing the, the new Roadster would just keep going I mean okay based on the numbers so uh, even a quarter mile you know it's faster than the other cars so uh, that means that the, the Roadster will have a big head start freaking big head start and eventually if the other cars will catch up they also have to catch up that that gain in the start yeah um all right next topic is battery size so tesla they claim that this will have two, uh, 200 kilowatt hour battery that is just crazy i see on the comments that people are like what what how is it possible you know what 
I'm guessing that the, that uh, prototype didn't have a 200 kilowatt hour pack. I'm guessing, my, my wild guess is it probably has a 100 pack, maybe a 100 pack from S or whatever, but it seems like uh, the Roadster is smaller. Uh, well, it, it looks can be deceiving, but it seems to not have the same space to fit, uh, let's say, an S or X pack. Uh, so maybe it's 100 only, maybe it's more, maybe they develop 120 or something, but uh, I highly doubt that they have 200 kilowatt hour in that prototype. But of course, eventually, by the time it comes out in two years, you know, they will use the, the larger uh, 2870 cells and hopefully, I mean, by then, you know, the, the energy density will increase. So uh, they, they are, they're doing a, like a like a, an ex estimation that you know by that time they, it will be possible to have 200 kilowatt hours so yeah I, that is my guess of course <laughs> I don't have any inside information in Tesla you might think it but um, yeah uh, but that also means that the Model S and X should also get 200 kilowatt hour later and Model 3 well the Model 3 has less space uh, and it will obviously be listening, like lower lower price range but I st I'm still guessing that the Model 3 should get at least 100 to 150 kilowatt hour pack so it would, doesn't make sense for Tesla to only offer this to Roadster you know they on also want to make this for the masses and with a bigger battery pack that also means that it should be possible to have faster supercharging maybe like 200 kilowatt uh, supercharging or maybe even more 250 yeah we don't know we never know what Tesla is gonna reveal, you know. They probably have been working with this car for, I don't know, a year or more. And uh, who knows what they are still working on, you know, in, the, in there, in the design studio or wherever, yeah, in the factory. Alright, uh, next topic is about range. So what kind of range can you expect from this? Um, so, you know, based on the size, the shape, you know, it looks very aerodynamic, very slick. And you see, like, if you compare the Roadster front to many like other fossil supercars. You see that these other supercars they have really huge like vents for cooling, whereas Tesla needs less of it. So I'm guessing you know the CDA value would be pretty low, uh, probably like 0.2 maybe. So in, in comparison, Model S and X they have 0.24, but that is CD value. Uh, of course, you have to. What counts in the end is CDA, so CD times area. And because the Roadster is so small, low, and slick, uh, it will have lower CDA than the other cars, and that means better efficiency, especially at higher speed. So I try to f like get, based on what I know, some experience with the other cars. I try to guess the range, and I also counted some heat loss. At higher speed so you know if you look at this table you might find it confusing but I try to round down to make it more realistic uh, but again because the battery pack will be so freaking huge 200 kilowatt hours there will be like less heat loss compared to today's battery packs so I also experienced that when I tested the other cars uh, I mean the smaller cars like like the the old Eagle for or the Zoe that it had significant heat loss when I drove it, like I stole it on the motorway. But bigger pack means less heat loss, and that is always good. So if you look here uh, at the table, uh, the 88 kilometers per hour is close to EPA uh, cycles, and uh, that's what they say. You know, it will do 1,000 kilometers, so 621 miles. Uh, but I guess if you increase the speed to 120 kilometers per hour, 75 miles per hour you can still do 860 kilometers or over 500 miles and even if you go faster well <laughs> probably not legal in US uh, but at least in um, in some parts of Europe maybe barely legal and in Germany 160 kilometers per hour should still be like over 600 kilometers and even if you do 200 kilometers per hour 125 miles per hour um, you know, I have a pretty low consumption there. Like, I'm guessing it's low because, like I mentioned, the car is so aerodynamic. It has big pack. And I don't know what else they did to, to make it more efficient. You know, smaller motors, maybe. So I'm guessing 500 kilometers at that crazy speed should be possible. 
And in, in comparison, if you look at the, the Model S 100D, which is the biggest one uh, with a more most efficient uh, moral configuration, uh, I haven't tried it, but uh, based on my test with the Model X, uh, I'm guessing that at 200 kilometers per hour, the Model S should be able to do about 200 kilometers or 125 miles before it runs out. So the Roadster will do two and a half times more range. Yeah, it's just crazy. And you know, Elon mentioned in the, the, in the presentation that uh, you know the Roadster is like a it's like a showcase. It's like a smackdown to fossil to diesel. Um, and you know, as a side effect, it also might be a smackdown in other ways because. Uh, the the record for the official like world record for hypermiling on diesel at least diesel or maybe production sedan whatever it's a Ford Mondeo 1.5 liter diesel. Some Norwegians did that. Two Norwegian guys they drove uh, in Norway from Lindesnes to Nordkap and uh, they they managed to drive 2,531 kilometers. Uh, but based on what I know about hypermiling. Um, I, I'm assuming, you know, if the Roadster can average 70 watt hour per kilometer, uh, that is slightly lower than the, the 100D Model S could do. Then, because the, you know, the Roadster should be lighter and slightly more aerodynamic, so you know, we can only hope that the consumption is lower. Then it could do as much as 2,700 kilometers. That means Roadster can beat a fossil. Yeah, in that term also. <laughs> so that would be pretty sick if it turns out that way. Right, but you know, um, also, okay, next topic. Uh, let's talk a little bit about torque because uh, many people um, talk about that. You know, they, they wonder what the heck, uh, 10,000 Newton meter torque, how is that possible? What they say, wheel torque. Um, and for example, uh, you know, P85, the classic one, P85 has 600 newton meter torque, but you have the reduction gear. So that torque is like the f the flywheel torque. Well, uh, I guess you know electric cars they don't have a flywheel, do they? Uh, but at least you know, torque from the from the motor. Uh, but on the wheels, because of the reduction gear, you get close to 6,000 newton meter on that classic car. And then I tried to dig in some information. It seems like you know the the P hundred D Ludicrous will have about nine thousand newton meter of torque on the wheels because it seems to have about nine hundred something from from the motors combined. So ten thousand newton meter from uh, the Roadster is not like you know, it's not that much more. But how I mean how is the Roadster much faster? Well, it's probably because it's lighter than the other cars. Uh, and more aerodynamic that that starts to count when you go hi at higher speed and uh, you know it's been said that um, it has three motors two rear and one in the front and uh, there's probably some kind of torque vectoring uh, to manage the, the maybe to get the best traction and maybe I don't know what else they can do uh, cool things they can do but uh, they didn't mention what kind of motors I, I heard some people claim that they had rare like, Powerful rear motors, uh, but in case they use Model Three motors, which is which has permanent magnets, um, then uh, you can assume okay. So the, at least the Model Three motors they can output about two hundred fifty something horsepower each, and that should equal to close to eight hundred horsepower combined. Uh, or if they use let's say two performance motors in the rear and then one small motor in the front, then you can have eleven hundred horsepower. So they didn't mention any horsepower figures there, but I guess some smart people can uh, calculate how much horsepower is needed to to accelerate that fast. Uh, but again, we have one unknown variable here, which is uh, the weight of the car. Um, yeah, and one way we could have tried to find out the weight of the car was to look at the tires and look at um, the the uh, weight index on the tires. Lo I'm sorry, load index on the tires. I think I have some footage, but I haven't you know, so much stuff to investigate in here. But uh, uh, based on the load index, you could try to figure out how much that car max, at least the maximum weight, and try to guess how much it is. But based on what I see, I'm guessing maybe 1,600 kilos. Um, but you know, um, 
all that stuff must be, I mean, uh, in order for uh, for Roadster to hit 250 miles per hour, which is 400 kilometers per hour, it must have better cooling than Model S and X. Uh, better cooling of the battery pack and also better cooling of the stator. Because um, in the beginning I thought that, you know, uh, the, the power limit came from battery overheating, but battery overheats uh, slower. It's big, has big mass. Uh, it turns out that the stators, you know, that uh, thing in the more more that one is what heats overheats. So they have to figure out something to make it better because you know um, you can you can ac I mean most people they can accept that Model S and X will eventually overheat because those are large family cars. But um, you know um, less people will accept that um, Roadster will overheat. So they have to do something smart. Otherwise, it's gonna be haters gonna hate yeah. and of course um, let's look at some other features here uh, and some other comments because uh, many many people they comment the wipers we're looking wipers they took the wipers from a Tesla semi I agree it looks just like the, the semi wipers man I hope they also use the the Tesla semi glass because that one is freaking indestructible yeah it's made from kryptonite or something no but um, you know keep in mind that this car is um, a prototype and if you look at the prototype model s and the prototype model x you know they are like completely different than the production model right okay but not completely but very different so ho hopefully tesla by the time they make the the production car you know it will be it will be better looking and i agree with the, the other guys that those wipers look weird uh, but on the other hand i've also seen some wipers on uh, some of the supercars and they also look you know, like weird but nobody complains <laughs> yeah um, but as for the mirrors, you know, there are no mirrors, uh, no side mirrors, and I don't think that's legal in Europe. Uh, I don't even know if it's legal in the US. So I think in the end they have to put some mirrors there, yeah, otherwise they won't sell in many markets. Um, and also the whole that weird like aircraft style steering wheel looks cool, but I don't think it's practical because you know the whole point. You, well, um, aircraft you don't like you don't use that you don't have much angle on the wheels uh, I don't, I, i'm not a pilot but i'm just guessing whereas in a car you will you need to do more rotations because if if you if it's too sense like if it's too like um too high sensitivity then you know a little bit of jerking at high speed especially 400 kilometers per hour would just get you off the road so um they have to make the steering wheel more more um uh, sen like higher sensitivity and that means more rotation so to me I mean it looks like cool gimmick but I, I highly doubt that they will make that in production uh, it might not even be approved you know, in you or whatever so I'm guessing you know it will have a conventional steering wheel with some more buttons there uh, another thing is that um, on, on at least on the <laughs> on the red one and also, also on the gray one the silver one there is no like door handle. Like what the heck? Just, how the heck do you open that door? I, I, need, I didn't pay attention how they open the door from the outside, but that that's also a puzzle to me. Like how the heck did they open it? <laughs> so I had to figure out. I mean, I have to do something. Uh, and if they don't have any door handle, and how is that gonna work in winter? And when it fails, you know, there has to be a fail safe. Yeah. Uh, I also noticed that it has an um, uh, adaptive spoiler. Uh, that's pretty cool. I think it's to give you more downforce at high speed, but also it could also improve uh, efficiency and uh, will also act as an air brake when you want to brake hard at high speed, just like uh, many other supercars. Um, and you see that the interior is very like clean and yeah, almost too clean. Um, but. It could be that uh, they are planning on uh, imp like implementing some head-up display, and that would make sense in in like a flagship because up until now Model X has been the flagship of uh, Tesla. But it seems like the Roadster is the new flagship, and uh, with the new flagship, you know they want to make it better than everything else. So head-up display makes more sense on the Roadster now, and I'm guessing just like with every other Tesla, you know the Roadster will also get. 
uh, cameras, radars, and everything, so it will have the autopilot and full self-driving and you know, summon and all that. All that stuff that you get with the other cars will also be on Roadster, of course. Um, you know, when I saw it and I, I look at the spec and I look at the price, I was thinking, how the heck is it possible to make this supercar that cost one tenth of uh, many of the other cars and still have better performance? Well, if you think about it, they can they could almost take a Model Model S battery pack and some motors from Model S or X or whatever and just put it in there and just make the car smaller and lighter and then almost out of the box they have um, a sports car that will perform better than the other cars because 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 of the nature of electric cars uh, so you know compared to these supercars where they just have to tweak everything they have to like use the most expensive components get the most horsepower out of that poor fossil engine and with with electric it's just I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, okay, uh, it seems so easy to do it. I mean, it's probably a lot of hard work behind it, but it's to show you how much potential electric cars have compared to fossil cars. You know, fossil cars, like, you are pretty much close to uh, how it's possible. Uh, whereas electric, we don't know. Sky is the limit, right? Or space is the limit, yeah. Uh, now, one thing that could bring up the price on the Roadster is uh, maybe they use carbon fiber because you know uh, Model S X uses aluminium to make it light. Uh, Model Three is more steel, heavier uh, but cheaper. And then maybe for Roadster they will use more uh, like carbon fiber or whatever light materials, titanium or whatever they can. You know, expensive stuff, but not too expensive because you know it's gonna not gonna be the price like. Uh, Bugatti price, so they still keep it low uh, and affordable for most people. Uh, so you know, sorry, this is a really long video, but uh, you know, people who are not interested in long videos, they they left already. So I'm just gonna talk about this. It's just I'm so freaking excited. So you know, Tesla, they're gonna change everything. They already did. Because you know, with the Model S. Uh, in the in the old days, like 2010, 11, 12, people, you know, the skeptics, they said, more or less, how is it going to handle winter, you know? How are you going to charge that thing? Uh, what about space? Is, is it going to work as a family car? And it turns out, it works just great. It has awesome range, you have supercharger, you, you have more space than the fossil cars. Just look at the banana box test. You know? It outperforms uh, fossil cars. And then there's another thing. Oh, well, you know, you can't tow anything with that, it's just a toy. Well, then Model X came out and he has more space for people, you can tow shit. Um, and so, also, <laughs> the Tesla Semi uh, shows you that you can also haul big cargo, heavy stuff, you can beat big diesel trucks. That's also something that you know, these skeptics, this anti EV has been talking for a long time about, you know. Electric cars, electric motors, they will just burn, they cannot take that big load. Just look at Model S and X, they overheat, you know. Well, just wait and see until the uh, semis start rolling out. Uh, and with the Roadster, you know, you can, you have this, you have way more performance for less price. Right? So it's just, like I mentioned before, you know, when I guess, like, it's gonna beat everything, it's gonna kick ass. <laughs> and it, you know, already, you know the Tesla racing channel, that guy from uh, US who do the drag race all the time, you know? He he made a gutted Tesla, he took out lots of stuff from the Tesla to make it lighter, that P100D, the white one. And that one has been beating lots of cars on the drag strip. You know, if he just sells that one and maybe sells his dad's uh, <laughs> Model S2 and buys a, a Roadster, it might be banned from the drag strip because it's gonna beat everything there. It's not even fun. It will be in a different class. They will. How is it gonna compete? You know, he will win every uh, every uh, race there, and they they will just people will complain. And <laughs> so it, it's just ridiculous. As if, if, I'm guessing that you know the Model X, which is a big big SUV. I'm guessing you know it can probably beat like 95% of the cars you, you meet on the street and I'm talking like you know 
maybe like acceleration okay when it comes to twisted turn yeah of course not if you go to north life of course not but most of the cars you meet and model s is even more i would say maybe like 98 percent of the cars you meet you know you like okay <laughs> you, wanna, you want a piece of me okay let's go all right sometimes you do it sometimes you don't maybe you meet like a really fast motorcycle then yes uh, model s is still too slow but the roadster it's gonna beat freaking everything, everything. You want, what you want to throw out, throw out some motorcycle? You want to throw out a supercar, whatever you know, three three million supercar. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's just I don't know, it's just insane. I I've been in shock here for two days. Yeah. Um. But okay. So next topic. I'm mean, we're getting close to the end here. By the way, uh, I mean, should you buy it? It's it's still you know a, a big price for a car yeah and it's, you can't you can't use it as some, uh, as a family car it's just you know a fun car but I guess you know people who have has a lot of money they don't care the two hundred fifty thousand for them they're like yeah I guess the VIP people at the at the unveiling events you know they have lots of money they're like take my money buy it too um, so you know it it is unbeatable and by the time it gets on the road by the time we get the production model and we get the whatever you know the, the high spec pro like faster than the base model it would just be unbeatable so you get pretty much supercar performance for i would say a low price best bang for the bucks um you know cost the other car if you want some of the other cars you have to pay two to ten times more and not only that but you cannot buy it anymore it's like limited edition whereas tesla okay order it wait three months there you go yeah uh, but if you go for one you know don't expect like superb interior because after all okay I'm not trying to be hair here but just trying to be realistic it's still a Tesla so you know you you might have to live with some panel gaps and some like curl like curl um, uh, I don't know what you're thinking not curl here I mean like leather that has been kind of curly about whatever you know like you, you can't expect perfect fit and finish it's just a tesla still but think about it i mean um people who see supercars like lamborghinis or ferraris or you know, whatever you know when they see them they, i mean they're like oh you know you, you look at the exterior and they're like oh shit yeah just like me you know, I, I i saw a white field so we saw the the road we were like oh man that looks freaking gorgeous so that's what people that's what you you know when you buy when you buy like a nice i don't know t-shirt or something and when you buy a nice car i don't care of course but you buy something because you want to show it off and roadster has it it has the freaking awesome looks and not only that but it has to be fast and roadster has it you know when when you see a supercar you don't go you don't go up to the supercar and like you know there's like some panel gap here or you know the, the interior looks a bit weird you know no you don't care it's a freaking supercar you you buy it for the performance you know so <laughs> i would say it's a no-brainer yeah um okay um last topic video is about to end yeah we could talk about this forever we'll probably talk about this a lot uh, during a live stream later but um, the big question is, will we buy it? Okay, um, you know, as of uh, mid-November now, I have a 68% discount. Um, so that is freaking huge. That 68% discount is worth $170,000. <sighs> Again, thank you so much for using my link. Uh, it, this would have been possible. The whole like adventure for the last three years, four years, I wouldn't have been uh, possible without you guys. But um, 68%, um, so if you try to break it down, okay, um, you know, people say, well, you have two more years to collect more referrals. I don't think so, because time is running out. Because, you know, if Tesla gives people too, way too long time, um, then everyone and their mother will get discount on the roads, and everyone will get it, and Tesla have to pay out a lot. So I think they did this on purpose, that they... Um, they you know they had this like um a roadster thingy and uh, you know not many people cared too much about it but they're like oh, okay cool a new car um and then they revealed it you know they didn't reveal it first and then showed the the um, uh, referral program because if they did that people would just go crazy they will 
pay they will pay people to get to use their link because they want their car because now it's like that now everyone talks about this wifey saw that on Thai forum on Thai they, they everyone wants it you know? um, so I'm guessing they will still keep this time limit that within this year people can collect um, referrals uh, that's it uh, that's my guess yeah uh, so you know if I stop if I don't get more than 68 percent by the end of this year and hopefully n n no one uh, will uh, cancel my uh, reservations then I still had to pay uh, eighty thousand dollars more for to buy that car and not only that but uh, I have to pay uh, 20 I think next year I mean the, day, the year after that no wait it'll be longer <laughs> but eventually I have to pay income tax and income tax is, is about one-fourth of the or the like the price of the discount and that would be another 40,000 so that means I still have to find hundred twenty thousand dollars somewhere <laughs> yeah let's, let's go rob a bank or something yeah we'll have to eat sticky rice with uh, kikoman sauce for the next two years and the best case is that we get hundred percent discount and get it for free but we still have to pay almost sixty thousand dollars in income tax of that price <laughs> yeah as I have to pay income tax of Optimus Prime and also the new car the P100D uh, more or less so that's just how it works in Norway because it, if you get it like a, a random raffling then it's um, not taxed as income but because it's not random then you have to they have to tax you yeah welcome to Norway so you know what we are not sure if we can afford it and not only that but I, I thought about it like in Norway it will cost over two million nook uh, or, yeah and you can expect maybe like 20% devaluation the first year so that is a massive devaluation I mean the value of devaluation is worth almost as much as a, a Model S second hand or something you know so it, it's gonna be very expensive to own it and also the tires they were like well, once again, 335 white tires, it's freaking huge tires. The tires alone will cost a lot. But on the other hand, if we keep it, you know, I'm not gonna do Nimba task with it. No, are you crazy? I will still use Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is still the workhorse. Uh, but we will use the Roadster for Europe road trips, maybe go to the grocery store, go to you know, of course show it off everywhere and do all that stuff, you know, go testing, yeah, go to Germany and Nordschleife, but um it would just be like the second car. Optimus Prime will still be the primary car, uh, but it will still be very expensive to own it. And I don't know how my situation will be in a couple of years. You know, hopefully I can build up everything and afford it. But as of today, it just <laughs> oh, it looks very um, very dark. But and and do we need that car? Mm, no, we don't need it. Uh, do we want it? Yes, we want it. Everyone wants it. Yeah, my precious. <laughs> no, just, but um, and also another thing. I'm just gonna drop the bow now. Um, about a week ago, we uh, we cancelled the Model Three reservation. So uh, here's the reason for that. Because uh, we were thinking, okay, um, wifey don't need it. I mean, uh, we ordered it for wifey. Uh, eventually, you know, um, she might need it as a second car, but probably don't need it uh, and if we need it one day then we can order it or we can even go for if we don't need like an expensive car we can go for let's say a second-hand leaf or something just to have a, a car to drive around and as I mentioned you know, Optimus Prime would still be the primary car for whatever or or even the Roadster so but this was this was yeah okay so we had like in the back of the head that we might use the Roadster as a replacement for Model 3 it's very expensive replacement but <laughs> But so we decided to just cancel the Model 3 uh, reservation, yeah. So um, I think that's it, a very long video. Uh, I try to dig as much as possible about uh, Roadster and stuff. And this is just amazing, I'm just saying, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. So um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. Um, we are still in LA, we'll go back in uh, like 3-4 days, then we'll go back to Norway and then resume uh, standard operations with Nimbertask and making videos in the snow, yeah. 
So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, awesome. If you want to comment, uh, have a nice, good discussion about Roadster or whatever, then yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Alright, talk to you guys later.